Hi everybody, welcome again to our service of worship. Despite the intermittent cold spells, spring is in the air and the signs of new life are all around us. In God, we live and move and have our being. So today we are going to reflect on what this unity we have with God means for us. Grace and peace be to you all. Lord, I come to you, let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Says I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround. You said, Jesus, where two or three are gathered together, or two or three hundred, you are in the midst of them. We pray that each and every person experiencing some form of estrangement may be united with you, with themselves, with others, and with the world we live in. All who are sick and tired of being what they are and wanting to be something different all wanting to escape the wilderness of emptiness in which they live out their days, all who are experiencing chains of some or other sort. Liberate all of us to be the best we can, to see your face in the shapes of our neighbors and to recognize your being in the world we live in. May it take place in this very moment of reflection. Amen. 
Our scripture reading today is from the Epistle of James, chapter 4, verses 14 to 26. Listen as James leads us to think again about what it means to have faith in God. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and eat your full, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one? You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, your senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abram justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see that faith was active along with these works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see, that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works, when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. This is our scripture reading. Praise be to God. Amen. The real issue James addresses in his epistle is that of alienation. A brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food. Those who are in a position to help feel so alienated, so distant, so estranged from them, that they do nothing. They respond with polite but meaningless words, go in peace, keep warm, and be filled. For James, alienation is to turn our backs on the suffering of our fellow, fellow human beings and care only about ourselves. Alienation, of course, goes much deeper. We may feel estranged from ourselves. Paul formulated in words which even a child can understand in Romans 7. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. It is when we are not at home with ourselves, comfortable in our own skins. Being out of touch with ourselves causes us to lose our connection with others. The pandemic has driven many relationships over the edge. There are people being forced to be in each other's company 24-7 just found it too much and decided to go their separate ways. Our relationship with nature is becoming more hostile and disconnected Human lives are lost and livelihoods destroyed in flash floods and forest fires. For James, alienation has a God connection. It is embedded in how we think about God. He quotes the oldest biblical creed in verse 19. It is called the Shema Israel, Hear, O Israel. This creed appears for the first time in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 
and is to this day recited by pious Jews at morning and at night. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The way the ancient readers of James interpreted it was, God is the one and only, God is on our side, we are special to God. If somebody then experienced poverty or ill health or other kinds of affliction, they reasoned that it was a sign of God's disfavor. In this way, they felt theologically disconnected from those in desperation. James argues against this idea. He uses various arguments, which I'm not going to repeat. And in doing this, he comes up with a radically new interpretation of this ancient creed that God is one. It does not mean that God is our God, on our side, the one and only. It rather means that God is not a mixture of good and evil, but singularly good and loving. Only good things come from God. And to be a child of God means to strive for this divine perfection, to be at one with ourselves, with others and with nature. We need to put this creed in action. And sadly, the self-centered interpretation of this old creed is still alive and well. It is still creating the havoc of alienation in our world. On Friday, a young man, fervently believing in his concept of the one and only God, went into a supermarket in Auckland, New Zealand, grabbed a knife and stabbed and wounded seven people. He sincerely believed that by taking lives, he was advancing the cause of true religion. Police shot him within 60 seconds after the attack started, and now he is regarded as a martyr by many. But this attitude is also inherent in our own religious tradition. From the 60s onwards, various studies have been done about attitudes of Christians towards social responsibility. They are those who hold strong beliefs about the uniqueness of their God as the one and only superior to all else. They feel very strongly about a personal God, the divinity of Jesus, the virgin birth, the resurrection, and the uniqueness of their version of Christianity. Incidentally, not a single one of these doctrines are referred to or even remotely alluded to in the Epistle of James or by Jesus himself. I do not mean that these doctrines are not true, but I am talking about the one-sided emphasis on and literal interpretation of them. In any case, the group who felt very strongly about them tended to be ethnocentric, homophobic, deniers of climate change, politically conservative, followers of authoritarian leaders like Trump, unwilling to support social change, opposed to vaccination, and disposed to conspiracy theories. It has become crystal clear that indoctrination results in alienation. This one-sided belief in God may therefore be one of the root causes of our modern feelings of alienation. I imagine if James had lived today, he would have written, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister cries in anguish about loneliness and alienation from their loved ones or themselves, if birds and animals are dying out because of foul air and putrid waters, and one of you says, be at peace with yourselves, 
find solace in your loneliness, let the air and the water be purified and clean, and you do nothing to change the situation, what is the good of that? So even today the burning questions remain. What role has religion, our faith, to play in the disunity we experience within ourselves, with others, and the material world we live in? There are senseless violence in our streets, racial disorder, natural disasters wreaking havoc, fish in the sea choking on particles from our toothpastes, scandals in high places, to the proliferation of destructive political ideologies, assassinations of whistleblowers, the grieving of the bereaved, crime and death, drugs and divorce, sex without love or beauty, and uh, an obsession with darkness, the monstrous, the demonic, the psychopathic. I agree with the answer Jesus applied, and which is worked out in James' epistle, to rediscover what it means that God is one, to re-experience what it means to be at one with ourselves, at one with our fellow human beings, at one with our fellow creatures, in short, to explore the art of radical loving. Real love is not a feeling or a sentiment. To profoundly love ourselves and others and the whole of creation means to have knowledge and understanding, to have respect and to collaborate in caring for ourselves and others and creation. To understand, to respect and to care, this is love. I so much admire those ordinary people who spend their Saturdays preparing meals for the hungry, who repair homes for our poorest sisters and brothers, who care for broken, hurting and diseased bodies, who calm troubled minds, who risk their lives to protect the vulnerable and who boldly speak truth to power, to understand, to, uh, to respect and to care. In 2014, Bruce Williamson promoted the society of childlike grown-ups. He argues that we can discover our essential humanity by observing the good qualities all children have. Our goal in life should be to die young at an advanced age, meaning of course to grow old while staying young at heart. He mentions typical things children do, which we may want to emulate. Give up worry and guilt and shame. Create things of beauty, build sand castles. Watch the moon and the stars come out. Go on adventures, laugh out and cry out loud. Ask lots of questions, find out how things work see things differently, fall down and get up again, learn new stuff, get excited about everything, make up new rules, trust the universe, talk with animals, say hello to everyone, make friends, have a merry heart, hold hands and hug and kiss, say yes and no and the magic words save the world and do everything and anything that brings more happiness, celebration, relaxation, communication, health, love, joy, creativity, pleasure, abundance, grace, self-esteem, courage, balance, spontaneity, passion, peace, beauty, and life energy to all humans and beings of this planet. Hear, O Israel, your God is one. We are at one with God, with ourselves, with others, and with creation. Amen.
go now into the everyday chaos, chaos of our world, ask questions, listen to voices that you would rather not hear, respond to all forms of estrangement, and put into action the boundless love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the calming presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Please join us again next week.